Hi, I'm Dr. Nora Isakoff. I teach here at Columbia University. I'm in the psychology department and I teach a couple of special seminars that I've designed. One is called Language and Mind, about the relationship between language and how we think. And one is called Consciousness and Cognitive Science, and that's about how we are in the world, how our brain gives rise to our subjective experience as people. I also work with Crimson. I work both with Crimson Research Institute, mentoring students in independent research projects. I also work as a strategist with Crimson students who are applying to different pro postgraduate programs that might be master's programs or doctoral programs. And I'm helping them from the very start to figure out what is it that they want to do, what are their goals, which programs will match with that, helping them sort through all of that, as well as then applying, interviewing, what kind of tests do they need, writing their personal statements, and all the way through the very end, I'm really there working collaboratively so they can achieve their goals. My undergraduate degree was in linguistics, and then I got my PhD, first my master's and then my PhD in cognitive psychology, and then I did my postdoc in education. And so I really work from an interdisciplinary perspective myself. In grad school, I took classes in lots of different departments like philosophy and linguistics and computer science. And so I really love working with students from any kind of background that's sort of within that realm. And I also have experience on admissions committees for master's degrees. And so from that, I really have a sense of what it's like to sit on that committee. There's some things that are surprising to students, like how little time you really have when you're on an admissions committee trying to evaluate students. And so things have to really pop out. And from having been someone who's a reader on the, those committees, I can really give you firsthand advice of what it, it's like and what the experience will be like for the reader of your application. So some psychology degrees are really clinically focused. And if you're going for a master's of social work or a master's in mental health counseling or a PsyD, a doctor of psychology, for example, any degree like that, you're going to do a lot of clinical work. So you're going to be having practicums and having internships that have to do with really working with people. And that's quite different than if you are in a more research-based program where you're really learning research methods, statistics, and content in a field like biological psychology or cognitive psychology. And so depending on which of those tracks you want, we'll really be looking at different programs for you and the application process will look quite different. So a postgrad program in psychology is really about learning how to think like a psychologist. And that means taking our human experience that we all have every day, we all know what it's like to have feelings, we all know what it's like to think about things, and realizing that introspection actually is not scientific. So in other words, I can't look at myself and say, I think this is how my mind works. I think this is how my emotions work, because I'm probably wrong. And the interesting thing about psychology is that we don't actually have access to the majority of what's going on inside ourselves. And so we need experiments to help us to disentangle our everyday experiences. So here's an example of where we don't really have access to the way our own minds work. So here's an experiment. And there's this guy named James, he's driving to work and he really had the opportunity to walk, but he decides to drive anyway because he's feeling a little bit lazy. And so they ask people, well, on a scale of one to seven, how immoral is James? And in the, the regular condition, people said, not really immoral. He's, it's fine if he wanted to drive to work. But they did this other kind of sneaky condition where they made there be a really bad smell in the room. And it was kind of a disgusting smell. And people weren't really aware of it, but that was on in the background. And when they asked those people, they said, James is really immoral. And then afterward, when they tried to ask why, they would say, well, you know, driving is bad for the environment. They would try to kind of post hoc explain it away. But the truth is they didn't have access themselves into what was causing them to believe that James was immoral. And so this shows that there's this relationship between feeling disgusted and then deciding something's immoral and people don't have access to that. So that's an example where an experiment is helping us to understand that. And it's something that people themselves can't introspect about.
One difference between undergraduate um, applications and graduate applications is that in undergrad, there kind of is this ranking where certain schools are considered to be on, on the top, that's Ivy Leagues and Oxbridge and schools like that. And there's this ranking, and it doesn't mean that you should only apply to the best schools, but there is kind of this established ranking. And it's quite different in graduate applications because there are so many different programs. And at this point, it's really about the fit for yourself. So it's important to be working with the professors who have research interests and practice interests that correspond with your own. And it might actually be better to apply to a school that you haven't even really ever heard of, but where there's one professor there that's doing the exact thing you want to do. And so I try to help you figure out who is that person that you want to be when you grow up and how can we get you to have a relationship with them, to connect with them so that you can really begin forging that connection even before you apply. Admissions committees really want to know that you know what you're getting yourself into. So if you're going and saying, I've always kind of been interested in what my emotions, how they work. I, I went to therapy once and I kind of want to know what that's like. That's not going to be appealing. Um, you really want to show that you've already kind of had the hard experiences. So hopefully you've had some sort of research experience or you've had some sort of clinical experience that sets you up so you can say, all right, I've done this. I know some of it's hard. I know some of it's boring and I'm really all in. And if you haven't had those kind of experiences, then we can discuss as we're working together how you might get those experiences in order to then apply later on to a graduate program. So for the personal, personal statement, you want to show, first of all, that you really know the programs you're applying to. So you haven't just kind of done a Google search and just you're applying generically to different schools. You want to show that you really have looked, that you know what's special about this program, who are the faculty there, and showing them that you really want them. That's first of all. Second of all is showing why you're qualified. So what experiences you've had that really qualify you to be successful in this program. And finally, a little bit about your future goals. So what will you do with this degree? You wanna really keep it professional. You don't wanna kind of go off into quotes and talking about other interests. You don't wanna be talking about your experience in extracurriculars at all. You wanna say, professionally, I'm here, I'm ready to focus. My biggest piece of advice if you're applying to a postgraduate program is to try to really know yourself. So if I ask you why do you want to apply to this program and you say I'm not really sure, then we have some earlier work to do before we can start working on the application. And we have to kind of ask what is it that you want? Why is it that you're not sure? What will help you yourself to feel grounded and to feel sure? And once you feel that, once you really know why you want to apply, the rest kind of follows from there because then you're just being yourself and we all have strengths to bring, we all have dreams, and then it's just about following through on, on what's really inside yourself.